Hello and welcome everyone to Galactic Gumbo episode 35. Uh, this is the Nerd Topic Show where we're going to be talking about uh, our Mount Rushmore, which is going to be a 90s game sh uh, kids game shows. Uh, so we're going to be going through our Ru Mount Rushmore of those. Uh, then we're going to be talking about uh, as far as Toy Fair. I know it's been, you know, Toy Fair passed about a month ago, but... Uh, I watched a few interviews and saw people they were kind of asking softball questions to a lot of these brands. So we wanted to kind of come together and come up with our own collection of questions that we would have asked if we were there at Toy Fair. Things that we think that the community uh, for all these different brands uh, would want to know. So we're going to be covering that. We're going to be talking about HasLab, some ideas that we think that uh, HasLab should try to shoot for. Uh, maybe not do these big extravagant things, uh, maybe something a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to obtain. Um, you know, that way a lot more people can get in on it. So uh, we're going to be shooting those ideas uh, today on this episode. Um, we might talk a little bit about something else, but I doubt we'll have the time. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get into introductions. Same way, left to right. Start with Dakota. Where can people find you? You can find me everywhere at Primal Sabbath. I'm everywhere at Daltonian STFs. And you can find me everywhere as Just Nerd G.I. Joe Show. And I'm on Twitter as Shattered Glass Jazz. And you can find me, G1 Extron, on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook pages, the G1 Extron. So we do have the Cybercast show uh, where we take a look at toys and we do a lot of, it's pretty much all screen sharing and uh, kind of cut up through that. Uh, that is in video form. So if you want to go check that out, episode, uh, I believe it was. 206 that is up now in video form so you can go watch that after this one's done but let's go ahead and get into oh god halls we haven't covered halls i i don't even know how to how it, i, it, I it's yeah it's been like to, two months I, yeah i'm trying tr yeah i'm trying to think like it's yeah it's been about a month and a half since we've done a galactic gumbo show uh i guess just off the top of your head you know i don't even know where to start but um, I'll make mine easy right here. GI Joe, all the count. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Who's next? I mean, I got some Gundams, I got some Transformers. So, is that? I've, I've got three Gundam model kits. I got the Battle Trap, uh, I've got the Rodimus Unicronus, I got the Elita One. I mean, Say what you will. I mean, it's better than Starscream. Mm -hmm. I got Hunger, Tailgate, uh, Beast Wars Second Galvatron. I think that's... Oh, and the Transformer. All right. Uh, I got uh, some Transformer stuff, some Voltron stuff. I got some of the McFarlane Borderlands stuff. and uh, Just kind of off the top of my head, that's pretty much it because I've just been trying to save up to get a new car. So, uh, that'll be, that'll be a big call whenever I finally get that sucker. Uh, but what about, uh, you Rick you going to close this out, man? Yep. Oh, I got this Terra drone behind me. Um, and that's pretty much the biggest item. And I got a bunch of vintage Joes and I got a few, uh, modern club Joes from, uh, Mike. Um, I did get that Megatron, Takara Legends Megatron this week. And I did get Dengar from the Sideshow 1-6 stuff. Nice. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our Mount Rushmore. Um, again, like I said, you know, this is going to be 90s kids game shows. A lot of these things were on Nickelodeon. Uh, I don't think all of them are, but uh, a lot of them were. Uh, so... Dalton, why don't you kick us off since you – I know you already had your four. I've got my four. I think Mike's kind of working on his. Uh, I don't know if everybody else is ready, but Dalton, why don't you kick us off? All right. Well, uh, I've got uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple, uh, Guts, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, and Nick Alive, I think is what it was called. Just in no particular order. I just used to watch them here and there whenever – I could catch him. Gotcha. Well, uh, because I had two that you did as well. Uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Thought that was, you know, cool because you kind of felt like you're in Indiana Jones. Uh, 
then I would say guts, you know, a little bit, uh, a lot of athletic going. Um, it was kind of like the kids version, I guess, of American Gladiators. I would have liked to be on that too. Uh, then I put, I had to, I had to write these suckers down. Uh, arcade, Nickelodeon Arcade which I heard it really sucked for kids that played the game, and they always looked stupid because it was like you were put inside a real video game, but the kids, whenever they played, they didn't know, really know what was doing So because they were behind a green screen, and they're like, oh, hey, there's a, a like spear flying across. You need to duck, and they're like, like, r- like right now, and they're like, oh, you got hit by the spear. You know, they're like... <laughs> What are you talking about? You know, so uh, it it was it was always funny to watch. It was something that you know involved video games. So I thought that one was cool. And then I did uh, hidden secrets because uh, it was just kind of like looking for loose treasure in a, a house that didn't belong to you. And the game show host, he would always like yell at you and like, "Hey, you got to go to the kitchen." And these kids had no idea where the kitchen was, even though like they had been looking at the house like the entire show. Like I always thought, like, I always try to put my, myself in to where if I was a kid on the show, how would I have been strategizing? One, I would find out during the show how the house is outlined. So I would know kind of map my way out where I need to go. But they always looked lost on that thing. <coughs> Who's next? I'll go. Uh... <laughs> The only one I could think of off the top of my head when we talked about this was uh, Double Dare, and there was a family Double Dare, but you could still just classify that only for really one game show. And then um, I had remembered, once I saw the picture again, was uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. And then um, there's a Jeopardy Team Tournament. And one, I think, would have to be um, the one you mentioned, Josh. Once you, you described it more to me, excuse me, would be a Nickelodeon Arcade. And you're right; they did look like complete idiots because they were behind. <laughs> they did. I mean, they're they're like, grab it now. The guy's yeah. like, grab it. It's right in front of you. And they're like, right here. They're like, oh, you're so close. And it like on the like we're watching it. It's like over yeah. here. We're like, look at this idiot. He can't just grab that. Uh, kind of reminds me of the, uh, reminds me of like the newscast thing from Whose Line. Yeah, but yeah, I remember that one just because you mentioned it. The only one, like I said, the only one I can really remember right off the top of my head was Double Dare. Uh, what what about you, Dakota? This um, is your prime time, man. The. Uh... <laughs> The um the one with the slime is the only one that I can remember. Double dare. Double, Double dare. dare. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Times three. <laughs> I mean, right. like, I just like I, I just didn't watch I didn't watch nineties like kids game shows. You know, he talks about how, you know, like the one was like fit and all that. I mean, hello, look at us. You see we're big boys. We don't watch stuff that makes you fit. Seriously. <laughs> Dude. Like, come on. I was Dude, fast as a kid. Guts was awesome, man. You get to Go through the obstacle course and then get a piece of the aggro crag. So. Yeah, no, I wasn't running around nothing. What about you, Rick? Uh, the only one that I watched like more than a handful of times was the family Double Dare. I remember that vividly. Um, I might have watched like two episodes of Legends of the Hidden Temple. So for my last two, I just reached out real deep on this. Um, it's not kids, but I watched Singled Out because at the time in 1990, I was 17. So I was watching Singled Out. <laughs> let's be let's be real. It had Jenny McCarthy on it, and yeah. I was seventeen. Need I say more? <laughs> so, um, and you know, when I was when I was fifteen and sixteen, my my first job was working in a supermarket. So supermarket sweet. I definitely watched oh, a few wow. episodes because it felt relevant to me at the time. <laughs> that was a good show. So yep, yeah, there you go. Let's see. Uh, Sportabus says Double Dare, and where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I like that one as well. Uh, Jonathan McKnight, he said, uh, Was there a show called Fun House? Don't yeah. know if I remember. Was there? He was Fun House. Uh, well, maybe a, a, another one, but uh, he said Fun House had 
cute cheerleaders, I think. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so it probably was a show then. Uh, let's see. I remember uh, some of them were kind of stupid. Like, what would you do? Where you'd just get in these pipes. Like, I don't know, these different pie uh, machines. And you get to pie somebody. I, I don't know. Uh, so I mean, some some of them were kind of lame. It was it was kind of a craze then, uh, to where they all you know they, they Nickelodeon <sighs> pumping them out as soon as they could. Wild and Crazy Kids, all these things. So, uh, but I, I thought that uh, Carmen San Diego was pretty good too. All right, so let's go ahead and get into um, the first thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was uh, the New York Toy Fair. So, like I mentioned before, that. Uh, you know, I've watched several, you know, interviews uh, that people, you know, had with uh, some of the different brands out there, whether it be Super 7 with Masters of the Universe, or you're talking with uh, about DC collectibles, or you're talking about, you know, uh, Star Wars Black Series, or, you know, any of that stuff, NECA. And it always seems like I'm like, here's like the questions that, you know, I, I want to know this information. And I know a lot of people in the community want to know these different things, you know, as well. But it seems like it's, you know, I'm so thankful to be here. So let me just give you a bunch of softball questions. And that just kind of irritates me a little bit. So uh, I started thinking, I was like, what are some of the questions that I would have asked? You know, so uh, I guess I can start us off. We can just kind of all, you know, hit on a brand. Uh, but Voltron. And uh, we kind of talked about this, uh, Rick, because you know I think we all like the Voltron cartoon series that's on Netflix with DreamWorks, and uh, you know like the is he over there? Yeah, that little Voltron lion there, and uh, the one that they did with the classic lines uh, were at 16 inches, and even the one for the Netflix series were like, man, those are cool. The little lions you know like those are obviously those are for kids and i was excited about the pilots i think you said you were excited about them too it finally was. saw them in store and god they are garbage uh there's paint issues all over the place they just look cheap and i was like you know i think me and you were having this conversation to where why not have like you got the die cast lines and like these other ones that you're you know they combine to be eight 16 inches or whatever so they cost a little bit more um you know 12, 20 dollars a figure or 30 dollars uh why not make like a 20 dollar like this is for the collector like nice pilots mm -hmm. you know and like kind of give that to us so you've got your ones for obviously cater to the children you charge you know instead of charging eight nine dollars what you charge for them charge us 20 just like black series marvel legends all that stuff and give us more of a, a collector, kind of like what Mattel did, you know, when they did their, you know, Voltron series. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what what do you think about that? You know, with something like that, you think it would work? Yeah, I, I like the the ones that the Mattel Club did. I have those lines, and um, I love those figures. I'm looking at them right now. I keep those up, and so far, I think they're the best version of like, at least the classic. Uh, characters i mean they definitely have that anime feel and they look pretty good there's with those they actually fit in the lions i don't really need them to fit in the lions as long as they look good they're articulated so you get a few poses out of them and the thing about that that netflix series is the story is really good so and the characters all get their moments um i know like in this new season for example pidge gets like a lot of moments so i mean i think people really like the characters so i think they could I think people would gobble those up if they look really good, came in good packaging, keep them a little less than 20 or around 20. Um, I'd be down for sure. Yeah, Jonathan McKnight says one of the strengths of the new Voltron is the pilot characters are well-developed. Yeah. You know, uh, and the thing is, is, it's made by Playmates. We know that they can do these like higher in collector style because they were doing it for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Classics. Uh, that Rocksteady and Bebop, man, those are on point, you know, and their turtles, they look pretty good too. And those were $20 figures. I just, you know, I, I don't see why you don't come out with the pilots and charge 20 to do it for collectors. And you don't have to come out with a ton for a wave. You can come out with three figures per wave and uh, do the 
OG pilots do the new Netflix pilots. And then, you know, you start adding in a couple of characters here and there. Like, uh, I, I forget what the, the crazy dude on the ship. Uh, oh, Cran. Yeah. <laughs> so you do him, you do Pidge's brother, you know. So you, you do a couple of the guys that are in the Blade with, uh, can't think of their names, uh, Keith. You know, so yeah. yeah. There's a there's a few figures out there that you know it doesn't have to be this thing that you do for a long time. But uh, do you guys have any ideas for Voltron, or do you think you know that that one's pretty solid? Would you buy into it? I mean, I, I wouldn't. I'm just not into the uh, five lions coming together to form big lion. So okay, not a Voltron fan. <laughs> I do think, like as they as they release them, I'm, I still think that they should be able to figure out like they were doing a long time ago, where like the Netflix season drops, and the way that they're cutting their seasons into like six episodes now, like they could go ahead and produce six of them. But when like a series drops like that week, it'd be cool to find like the pilots or whatever the characters are at the store. And if it's only three, I mean, you know, you're looking at the most sixty. If you're cherry picking your favorite characters, like twenty bucks. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's key dropping them as the season, as the seasons kind of drop. I think having it in an organized way and distributing. I know that's a foreign concept nowadays, but you know, <laughs> trying to figure that out. Honestly, I feel like as far as like on the distribution front, um, I mean, like why not just like put them up ready to ship from Amazon, something like that. I mean, something where you know people can get them in, you know, two days. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I know I know the re the retail world is uh fading, mm -hmm. so why not kind of capitalize on that? Uh, you know the future of shopping. Yeah, I exactly. think it's a great great idea. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I don't have to find them at regular retail. Just no. Nope. You just need a, a collector. You know, uh, you know a, a collector line. You know. Yep. Uh. What about uh Super Seven? You know they you know make a bunch of different stuff, but I mean kind of concentrating on Masters of the Universe. I, I know not all of you guys collect it, but uh, I I think that my question to them, uh, which did get asked, is probably going to be the same as same as Rick's. Uh, we're both thinking about the same thing. Uh, so, uh, but what would you guys ask? Uh, will you make more things than He Man? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Thundercats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I can I can get behind that. Yeah, I mean, I would like to hear them say that they're trying to still, you know, get the license, even though, like, if they really don't even have an update from the last time that they told us that they're still trying to get it, mm -hmm. like, just the question has to be asked and it wasn't yeah didn't, didn't they have or am i thinking of another company uh, and i may be thinking of mattel i don't know someone correct me but didn't they have like figures made for the thundercats who who was that that had the figures made for mattel. them was that mattel oh, okay yeah and they only did the the first uh yeah, they wave. didn't even do all the characters. Yeah. yeah, they just did the first wave, and then they did said, "All right, we're getting rid of the Maddie Collector stuff. No more He Man." And that's when Super Seven ended up picking up the He Man, but then they wouldn't let them pick up Thundercats. That's, you know. Yeah. So the other thing I would have asked about is, hey, any update on? You guys said that you were thinking about or want to do Snake Mountain, but you'd have to cut some stuff to make it more cost efficient and. Uh, it might have to be kind of like what has has labs is doing, you know, with like if you have to pre-order it prior. Mm -hmm. Like the question wasn't even asked. Yeah, that's the thing, though, like if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And that's a problem that we're running into with toys in general, not just Super 7. So we want it, but I don't know how many we are anymore. As far as like the Thundercats and even the He-Man stuff to some degree, I feel like that's my most niche line that I collect is He-Man because I don't hear people talking about it. It doesn't have a comic. It doesn't have a new animated series. I don't even, is it on Netflix for, can you watch it on Netflix? I'm not sure. Yeah. I have like the old, I have the old box sets, but 
honestly, I would have thought that the toys that, that made us would have maybe kind of rekindled some interest in that. You would have thought. I'm surprised it didn't. It's, we're just bombarded by too many messages these days. I mean, we're all hooked up. And a lot of people have, I don't do all the social, but most people do all the social. You still got all the other messages that you're bombarded with daily from McDonald's and Target and cell phones and toys have gotten lost. So if, if the Super 7 stuff, I, I just wanted to point out, like, I think that they're this first, the first wave that we, that we've gotten, I thought the, the boxes, every, I thought everything, everything got to me in great shape too. Like it felt a little bit better than even the, what, what Mattel had been doing for years. Like all my boxes got to me mint. Um, and there, I thought all the figures were really well done. There's a few like just teeny nitpicky things like Triclops's hat, but like the figures look good. So I feel like I can trust, I feel like I can trust them overall now and they're only going to get better. This is the first thing that they put out. So yeah. I would definitely, I would bombard them with Thundercats questions at this point because we know what they're capable of now. We have product in hand. So I'm hoping that people are communicating with Super 7 and and, and talk about those things because I'd, I'd certainly like at least the classics Thundercats like the main characters I don't need all you know 70 characters that they have but I mean I want those but yeah if you can <coughs> give me the core give me the top 20 yeah, give me like the top 20 that'd be great yeah because they look a little they look a little silly because even, even even Dalton said that hey I just bought me a jackal man you know I'd want, I think I'm gonna collect these thundercats I'm like well it's not gonna take you too long you know they look, they look awesome yeah, not yeah. uh what about uh diamond select toys uh was there anything from diamond yeah. select toys that uh you know caught your eye I could go DC direct with a question. Oh, I just I was just going in order that I had typed them in. So I put for Diamond Select Toys. I'm like I saw that they're going to be doing the uh, the real Ghostbuster line uh, mm -hmm. for those four characters. Uh, you know, my immediate question again, a question that did get asked was, uh, would you guys ever think about doing an Ecto One to go with the real Ghostbusters? You know. Uh, yeah. Or doing an Ecto one where it could translate for the real Ghostbusters, or it could even translate over to just your other regular Ghostbusters and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, something, or, or maybe even Kickstarter it, or it's a pre order thing, you know, or, you know, direct from you guys at a website or something. Like, just, just to ask the question, you know, Ecto yeah. one, is it just like, no, shoot it completely down? And so, okay, you know, done. Or it's like, hey, you know, would there be interest? You know, how would we gauge interest? You know? Yeah. I I know I'm gonna pick those up just to support it because if you don't support it, then we're not gonna get an ecto. That one's that's an easy one. So I'm gonna buy at least the the four that we saw. And I know it was it might have been Pixel Dan. Someone was asking about the villains. That would be my question. And I would bombard them with that question, like right around the lease of these figures, especially once you pick them up, if you pick up the real Ghostbusters stuff. Uh, I want that Sam Hain. I want a um, Boogeyman and Sandman. Those are the three villains that I I want. But I feel like we I don't think we've ever gotten a Boogeyman, at least um, the ones the old classic line. So I would like to get that. I'm going to support that. I don't really support a whole lot that um, Diamond Select puts out, but yeah, me neither. Those. Uh, did you guys see anything through uh, Diamond that you liked, whether it be Mini Mates or Ghostbusters or Marvel Select? Or that's the thing, man. Diamond hasn't put out like anything that's appealed to me in a while. Um, I just and I, I feel I feel like the not maybe not necessarily like the sculpt quality. Like I feel like they're kind of trying too hard to be legends i get that they really have to compete with marvel legends but like i definitely feel like the just the sculpt quality in general has gone down um and i get I, you know i guess the only thing that i would ask them or have to say to them is uh you know do better mate well i mean well yeah there's you know you want to ask the question you know you can say like hey we saw you know a while back years ago like the juggernaut you guys did or 
Uh, I know the Venom and the Carnage, I, I have those, and those are great uh, looking figures. But then I look at some of the other ones, and I'm like, yeah, those, those aren't very good at all. I think, yeah. the Gambit, I think the Gambit, I thought, looked pretty good. Uh, you know, there, there's some really good solid figures in there, but it's mostly uh, their older stuff. And like, I, I would wonder, I would want to know why they like it. Like, they look like they have like those McFarlane hips. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a, it's a very weird cut for the, for the joint. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for that area, I'd kind of, I'd kind of want them to go back to those old, as much as I don't like them, those old, like weird Marvel uh, universals. That they that Marvel put in like the legends and some of the three and three quarter inch stuff for a while. That weird like ball disc swivel thing. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, the the crotches that uh the crotch area, hip area that Super Seven just worked on. I'm real pleased with those. Like I was standing them up and stuff, and it's it's brand new. It's not like the old He Man stuff. Um, uh, but there's a good nice tension. Um, there's no loose like the transformer stuff. You got the loose ball joints and stuff. I didn't get any of that. So whatever they're doing, that pr whatever they have on the inside there is really nice. I dig uh, figure arts. What figure arts does? I mean, it's really simple. It's just a hinge with a ball joint. But like, you get that hinge option if you want to like, you know, not have the, the the silhouette broken up or the sculpt broken up. And if you need to pose it, you can kind of pull down on that hinge where that you know, stem for the ball joint is, and you can, you can pose accordingly and, you know, you can kind of work the legs around like that. All right. Getting, uh, getting Mike involved in this conversation. Cause he's like, when are we going to talk about something that I actually buy? Uh, so <laughs> let's talk, you know, GI Joe, uh, and whether this be through Hasbro labs or, uh, you know, something else, I was going to say, you know, you know, we'll, t we'll talk more through about Hasbro Labs all throughout this, but I kind of put the two together uh, because you're not getting anything G.I. Joe outside, you know, the club or convention that I don't think that the Hasbro Labs has to be just strictly like it's got to be a USS flag or it's got to be this, you know, barge for Job of the Hut, like all these like huge things. Why not, uh, you know, here's a perfect opportunity to try out that six inch GI Joe series, you know, of figures that just put a wave of five figures up there, you know, snake eyes and, uh, you know, Cobra commander or Duke or, you know, lady J and, uh, storm shadow, you know, and just be like, bam, here's kind of like a first five figures, six inch. Uh, let's, let's see how they sell. You know, we got to sell at least this many. And if we exceed their expectations, they're like, all right, all right we might have something here. Well, um, it's funny you should mention that. There was actually a poll done on um, Twitter by one of the groups, and um, they had ranked in order by voting on what we would want to see done from HasLab. And the number one item was a Cobra Terror drone. Which already exists. Right, but these are people are wanting stuff, you know, they're hoping maybe they'll do stuff that updated version for modern error. So you would want a modern era version of Ooh, it. that four inch um, scale. Right, exactly. As well there was a lot of things on here. Uh flag actually came in uh fourth on that uh yeah, I would have yeah, uh, thought flag would have kind of been like the top. I voted for it as it was the top. It was um, Terror Drum Whale, Cobra Transport Chopper, which it would be nice to see that, and then the flag, and then the uh, eighty three headquarters. Yeah, but see, but you said like that was a Twitter poll or something yeah. that uh, from GI Joe. Like I said, like I like GI Joe. You know, I, I love it, and I'd love to get into it, uh, but I'm a six-inch collector, so I didn't ever right. see that poll, you know? And so, therefore, I could never take part in it. But you say, like, hey, we're talking about doing this six-inch thing, you know? Uh, that brings in a new collector. I'm a different collector. Uh, right. So they could even run 
one for six inch at the same time that they're running one for a teradrome or something like that. I just like with that stuff, you know, like uh, Ricky just bought a Terradrum, so and if it really wasn't modernized, it was just like kind of reissued or whatever. Then I doubt that he's going to back another Terradrum, you know, because he, he just bought one, you know. And then you've uh, USS Flags, like we see how well that that uh that barge for Star Wars, it's not doing as well as what they thought it would do. No. And, a lot of people say like, "Oh, USS Flag, man, I want one." All right, now pony up the whatever over a thousand dollars that you're gonna have to pony up to get it and ship it, and then I think a lot of people and then clear out you know all this shelf space so you can display it, and I think a lot of people would have to balk at it. Honestly, man, yeah. I feel I feel like that's a loaded a loaded question or a loaded statement though, Josh, because like. That that like that's not open to the world. It's just open to the you know you know the United States, and they just opened it up to Canada for that barge. I think if that was opened up to other countries, you know, like because Hasbro is a global brand, um, it should have been open globally to their customers. I think, man, I think that that thing would have reached its uh, its its minimum way 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 long ago. Yeah, but I'm just going off of what it is right now, and as of right now, it's only U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Right. So, but if, there, if if Hasbro is listening, though, Dakota made a good point. I I totally agree. We probably all agree on that. Like, oh yeah. If if they could just open it up and figure it out, you know, people, so the shipping wouldn't be like just gargantuan. Those projects like a barge or a flag might work. But I, I see what Josh is saying too. Like, if it's something where you want to test the market a little bit, and the best way to do it is is like that. Or, you know, with the six inch stuff, because I'm down with the six inch stuff too. Love the three and three quarter. Like, it's been my life for the last two years. I'm trying to complete that Joe, vintage Joe collection. I like the modern stuff too, but I'm open for the six inch. Um, but, you know, the other thing I think Josh was saying is like, what about the smaller stuff? Like, a whale is a little bit smaller than a pterodrome or, or, or even like the moray. Like, everybody loved that, that coat oh, yeah. of hydrofoil. Like if and, and maybe it's it's one of those things where they call it like classic GI Joe or there's like a name for it you know if it took off and you, if it's a way to get like some of those vehicles that we that we didn't get again or if they're in the same color scheme like what we liked as a kid uh, but revamped a little bit for the four inch stuff I'm okay with that too like I'm I'm cool if it's a way to get GI Joe vehicles I'm down I'll kickstart that with you anytime any place. Yeah, so I, I see. I, just, I see what you're saying. I just didn't want it to like them to look at this Haslab thing, you know. And they're kicking off something for Star Wars that you know has never been done. But I didn't. I I just thought that taking the approach of, oh, it's got to be the barge. Now it's got to be the flag. Next, it's got to be the Defiant, you know. And then next, yeah. it's got to be you know Tony Stark's Avenger Tower. Like, what? Why does it always have to be these like? five, six, seven hundred dollar items, you know, like make, mix in some like little fifty dollar or a hundred dollar items in there to where you know and see if those work. Maybe maybe those sell really well. And it's like Dakota's one of his favorite sayings is uh you guys helped pay and fund so that I could get my flag, you know, uh be because this was selling so well and they made so much money off of you know selling the well. Or uh, you know the or the Night Raven or something you know that they, they were able to uh, you know fund some of these get some of these things that are bigger going. I mean, you kind of read you follow like me on that one. Tower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, but that's and see, I feel like that can kind of go another way. Like, I you know, I feel like the big ticket items is what's going to fund the little ticket items, and not the other way around. And I feel like that's what Hasbro. That's how Hasbro is looking at it. You know, they're looking at it like, okay, you know, we. If we can get this to sell, like, you know, here's our profit margin. You know, here's what we here's what we need to do to to make this profitable, to make this work, to fund other things. And, and I feel like that's that's part of that. Um, so I feel like that's how you're gonna get your stuff. Like, you know, you you know, maybe like, hey, let's 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 take a shot at, you know, okay, five of these six inch figures. You're gonna have to be limited, obviously. You know. So here's a base price. Like, 
you know, I don't think you're going to expect to pay $20 per six inch figure. You're probably going to pay 35 to $40 per six inch figure. I don't think they'd be yeah. more than 35. I'm thinking probably yeah. 25, 35 max. Hey, I know, but like, you know, the fa factor, factor in, you know, shipping and all that other stuff is, is what I'm saying still like, you know, so if you're going to buy five of those, that's, that's another 200 bucks in the bucket. You know what I mean? And that's, that's if they just want to cut it at five. Yeah. You know, like I'm I, I yeah, I mean, just, all of it is just, you know, like me giving an example, you know, to, right, to right. water and you come out and it's not like you order individual figures. It's like, here's the wave you know, so service base. down because you're getting a whole wave. Um, yeah. I want to, the other, I want to point out something too. And that's like, you know, there are a lot of collectors um, and a lot of people who are serious collectors or consider themselves to be a serious collector and they go to the store or they order online waves of Marvel legends like a whole wave. I see people do it all the time. They're really into it. But they like Star Wars or they like Transformers, but they have a hard time with a $300 to $500 price tag. And here's my problem with that. If you're buying all those Marvel Legends, you're spending about $120 to get your build a figure in the whole set. If you stop and think about it, if you they're putting out like Marvel Legends now, like a whole series, you could probably, what, in, in about a month, you might see Spider-Man wave, an X-Men wave, an Avengers Infinity War wave. If you had just saved that money, you're looking at almost $400. So something like a dream project where you could get like a, a, a sail barge or a killer whale or a terror drum, save your money for like a month um, and put your money where your mouth is. Because I know a lot of people have been hollering about like Hasbro or whomever the company is putting out these big things. Well, there's one up right now. So I just hear a lot of people scoffing when, you know, if they just kind of manage their money a little bit, the Marvel Legends figures, they're going to be there in like three or four months. The stuff that HasLab, at least right now you're looking at, it's like dream project stuff. So if you're a serious action figure collector, especially Star Wars, um, that's like the only vehicle that they haven't made from the vintage line that was seen in the movies outside of like even the Star Destroyers, you know, there yeah, are I, versions I, of them, I can't but. I can't see like these people uh that have like pretty much everything from the vintage line and then them just being like oh six hundred dollars I'm balking you know like yeah. come on you've been waiting for this thing your entire life you know and it would complete your collection it'd be the highlight piece uh Jonathan McKnight he brings up a good point he says but it seems uh like by testing the waters with these huge GI Joe vehicles that they would kind of be doomed to fail uh, because uh, I think the point he's making is if you started off with smaller stuff, you might actually bring in new fans. So you start yeah. off, you know, whether it's not six inch, let's just say it's three and three quarter inch. Some of these smaller things uh, that maybe they come with a lot of pieces. I don't remember how much like the bubble and stuff or, you know, just smaller things. Um, uh, that they came in with like a bunch of missiles, maybe that are hard to track down, or maybe it's a white vehicle uh, and it's hard to find one that's clean with the stickers and stuff. Maybe you come out with that and you start, you know, and you rebrand it. Like here's the judge Joe classics collection or whatever. Yeah. And then people could start off fresh. And then now you're building up new GI Joe fans. And then you can start hitting some of those big uh, ticket items. Down with that. Yeah, so ju just an idea, you know, but uh, I, I would jump all over the six inch stuff and then I would be, you know, in there with the G.I. Joe stuff with you guys, you know, just on a different scale. Yeah. I yeah. just, again, it's a question I would have asked the Hasbro people. Uh, I don't even have to look at the next one because the next one uh, was going to be another Hasbro one. Where's this mask that you guys like? acquired the rights to like two years yeah. ago. Like, where's it at? Yeah. Like, well, there's, this is the second Toy Fair in a row that I'm like, hey, we'll probably see some masks this year, you know? I know that things with the comics on that front, like, Rick, do you know if they canceled a uh, uh, mask and, or not, uh, no, 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 mask was supposed to be with Scarlet Strike Force. Never mind, I was thinking of Rom and the Micronauts, because I, I haven't seen anything for that book, but like, the that fiction... It is, so yeah. I think I got like number two or three recently. Oh, my my local comic shop must three, have I not think. added it to my uh, pools, like I asked them to. Because <clears throat> I was like, I was like, dude, you know, where is this freaking book at? Like, yeah, 
you know. But oh well. I, mean, if I'm, I haven't seen Mask though. I don't know what's happening. Well, Mask now. was supposed to be absorbed by GI Joe, and then Citizen's GI Joe book fell through. Right. Obviously. So, yeah. So, uh, so like, the, I feel like maybe they kind of looped uh, Mask in with that failure. But you know when we when we talked to Daryl Dupree last year at at, G, at the GI Joe Con, I asked him about whether Hasbro whether Hasbro was looking at the comics as a way to test the waters or just get fan feedback. He said no. He said it was completely separate, kind of like this sandbox that they could play in and hear those characters, and it's a way to kind of keep it out there. But it wasn't being looked at like that because that was one of my first questions that I asked yeah. him. I mean, I can't like, I, dude. I can't help but think like, they've got to, they've got to look at that and see. Like, I mean, they've, they've got to see the, you know, the, the the either the excitement or the lack thereof with that. You know what I mean? Like, they, like they they've definitely got access to to those to those numbers. And I, and I, I mean, like that's that's my thing though. Like, I feel like that's it. I feel like that they just kind of lumped mask in with Joe because now there's nothing for either of them other than, you know, Hama's book. But as far yeah. as like any potential for new GI Joe going forward, you just don't have it. And that kind of, you know, mask got kind of sucked into that as well. I don't know. I, I like, I still like this idea, whether it's classic GI Joe or classic mask or just Hasbro classic period as this thing where we could, you know, if they pull, whether they pull us or they try the Kickstarters on based on what they think is going to sell. Like if, if, if Rhino went up or even Thunderhawk, let's just say Matt Tracker, classic Matt Tracker, blonde hair, blue eyed Matt Tracker that you know from the cartoon with the Thunderhawk. Uh, I don't, you know what? I don't even care if they modernize that Z28 a little bit. I don't care what they do with as long as it looks like Thunderhawk. It has this kind of the same look and feel. I would back that. If it let's say uh, let's say it was a little bit bigger than the the original one. It's WS six, by the way. But keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was a little bit bigger than the original one, and they said let's say it was um, seventy nine ninety nine. Comes with the figure. Mask is removable. Um, the wings still go up. You know, it's got some of the features. It's still a mask vehicle. The package looks like a classic package or a new new way mm. to present it, but it still looks kind of classic. I'd do that for like eighty bucks, you know. Yeah, and see, I, I would I would probably get it, like I'd probably sell the Matt Tracker because you know I'm I'm a fiction buff, so I want you know I want my comic shelf to be my comic shelf. But fortunately, I have that uh that uh, that Revolution box set to to have that cake and eat it too sort of thing. I just I see this but, stuff selling on you know and I know eBay is not like you can't look at eBay and judge everything or or even conventions but you know I see the the way that this stuff sells at conventions when you can first of all you can barely find any of this stuff like mint complete no no issues it's hard to do it's not it's not an easy feat somebody might say it is I challenge you on that because it's not because I do it a whole lot and I think if you could present these things in a classic way but you don't have to make 20,000 of them and you're making it, you know, to order, why not do it? Look, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking at all the, the Kickstarters that are finally like getting funded and moving through and, you know, the stuff that boss fights cranking out and there's only going to be more companies doing it and having success with it in the future. All it, all it took was kind of like, um, you know, someone being successful with it. We saw a few failures at the beginning of this, this Kickstarter stuff, but now they're, they're a lot of them are getting funded, and people are saying that they're they're good figures. So, I'm I'm glad that Hasbro is at least thinking about it. Maybe it wasn't the best plan of attack to put the sale barge at number one, the first thing out. But I'd like to like uh, I would prefer to buy all my stuff like that. Just be like, hey, here's you know, even like like the mass classic like you're saying or even six inch characters for them where you don't even come with vehicles it's just the figures like yeah. i would i would probably be in on both of those uh you know the six inch joes i'd be in on that if they you know just like there's a lot of different stuff that i could you know pick in and just be like all right put me down for that put me down for order for that um hell i'd love to do all my shopping like that uh 
<laughs> if Maddie Collector didn't have like the crappy service that they did with Digital River and yeah. overcharging people and not shipping stuff out or canceling in orders and then you know or just they had so much garbage happen to you know through Digital River, uh, you know they were kind of I think one of the originators of made to order you know yeah, here, yeah subscription here, stuff yeah subscription stuff. And you know, here it is. If you want it, then you know, get it. Uh, same thing like Super Seven. I just love the Super Seven model. Look, we're just making this to order. You want it? Uh, here's a month to you know put your money in it, and then you know we'll ship it out when it comes in. You know, like I'll be honest, man. I feel I really feel like that worked out really well for the Transformers Collectors Club as well. I mean, they wouldn't have you know, and even for the GI Joe Collectors Club too. Obviously, like they wouldn't have continued to do it if it didn't. You know, if it didn't produce the results that they wanted it to, yeah. and, and I mean, clearly it did because we got what four or five for the Transformers Club, and you know what Joe's getting seven altogether. Eight, eight. Okay, so yeah. like, you know, but like also, I feel like I feel like Hasbro's put like most of that stuff was made at least as far as Transformers go. Like, you know, I, I'm just using the convention numbers because they never release subscription service numbers, but there was like two or three thousand you know, per figure, give or take, um, depending on the year and the set and all that. But he, even some of it was like in the low two thousands, um, for a run. But like, so I feel like 5,000 is like maybe them getting greedy, like to set as a minimum, you know what I mean? For, for anything. Yeah. You know, we, we, we've seen like fun pub, even paying a license to Hasbro was able to, you know, effectively get make money to put toys out in you know fewer numbers than even that. So certainly Hasbro, who doesn't have to pay a license to themselves, can do it. You know what I mean? Like that's how I feel about it. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. I, I would love to just do that. I guess if yeah, if you want to call it subscription service, because uh, I, I I I love the model that uh, Super Seven has. Just a hey, yeah, you want it, you pay for it, and then we ship it out, and then, you know, I, I don't have to worry about it, you know, anymore, you know, like, we'll just make it to order, you know, we're not going to be stuck with all this back stock, so, exactly. you know, or any of that, you know, um, so, yeah, I mean, those are, you know, some of the, uh, the things that I'd like to see Hasbro do more of. Uh, right. Do y'all want to move on to Transformers, or do you have something to add, Dalton? I uh, pretty much the same thing that's been going on. I mean, just the subscription service. I'd like to see some of these things that they've been telling us that they're going to be putting out actually come out. You know, don't stop beating around the bush and do it. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, well, to, to, to add for, uh, I guess, Playmates as well, since it's kind of the same thing. You showed off that classics shredder and Krang, you know, the Android body. And then I was like really excited about those and like, oh, cells weren't that really good. And which I don't know what they're talking about because every time that they put it, my Toys R Us, they would put it up on like an end cap and they would put it up in the morning. And I w went there when they opened it like nine. Uh, I got my figures and then I went to another store and I came back not even an hour later and they had like, I don't know, like five or six cases. They were all gone. They had, they were changing the end cap. I'm like, Oh, weren't the toys turtles here? They're like, yeah, well, they already sold out, you know? So, uh, even if they did something kind of like that, just, uh, Hey, you guys really want this shredder and crank or, you know, and if these do good, maybe we'll do an April and a Casey, you know, uh, the, just these classic, you know, like little twenty dollars, these twenty dollars figures for these adult collector, you know, adult collectors, us. Uh, then they're going to be on our website, you know, direct here, and you know, you pay up front, and then we'll we'll make make them to order and ship them out to you as long as we have X, you know, amount number done. So because they've already got the molds for them because we saw the prototypes. So well, the same thing there. Were they resin prototypes? Were they painted resin prototypes? Were they actual test uh, shots? I don't, I don't test shots? They were uh, they were painted. 
Okay, I was gonna say like just because you see a prototype doesn't necessarily mean a mold's made. Yeah, so I know, but they they uh they were prototypes. They weren't test shots. Okay, so, so they were resins. They 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 were good. They like they were all smooth and clean. Uh, I'd I'd have to pull. Well, I mean, I've got I've got I've got a resin prototype that's smooth and clean. Is what well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get technical with their particular. I'm just saying that I would like the same thing that we were talking about for them to do as well. Give us a chance to get some of those classics and let us show you because that's that's the whole thing is when they send out like one store could be like like my toys rusted. They completely sell out of those Ninja Turtles. And then there's probably some where you were where they just didn't sell at all. And they're telling playmates like, look, don't send us any more of this stuff because no one's buying it. You know, right. it, again, that's a distribution. Like, where's the stuff selling? You need to get it to where, you know, it sells the best. So that's kind of like um, G.I. Joe when uh, they on the uh, 50th anniversary line and they told us at JoeCon 2016 that there would be no more vehicle sets because the stores weren't selling them. They would have them. But they were clearancing them out. So that's why when G.I. Joe did the last 50th line, all we got were two packs and three packs of figures, and that was it because no one's buying the vehicles, and they're getting clearance out, and Toys R Us is losing money, which, of course, they've lost their ass since then anyways. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we never got no vehicles after 2016. Yeah, so, uh, anyways, let's move on to Transformers. Uh, you're, you know, we're sitting there talking to Hasbro. Uh, what's some of the things you would ask uh, – I'm about Transformers. Where are my painted rims? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Number one. Well, yeah. Rick wants to know where his well, painted rims are at. Yeah, and, and I'm okay paying 50 cents more per figure to get it. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell me I won't pay it. I'll pay it. Yep. Please, look at my See, room. Come on, I'm crazy. Well, one, one thing I've noticed is, you know, they say they want to make it make their toys like they did back in the 80s, just give it that same feel as, well, if you're going to do that, then you know don't pre-apply the stickers. Give us a sheet. Oh yeah. Let us do it ourselves. Preach, preach. I mean, that's that's the way to do it. If you're going to do stickers, that's my point. We'll <laughs> screw it up Here. ourselves, and we're the only ones to blame. We, we don't Here's, have to be mad at you. Don't make us that. mad at you. I I I, I got to... answers. Man. I got answers. Let me answers real quick. What they're going to say is, is that the toys are geared towards children. And this eliminates the parents having to put stickers on. That's why like my mom on. used. She said I tore open those transformer boxes and just got the toy and started playing with it. And she would go through my like just like floor of destruction of all these boxes and just be like, "All right, here's this tech spec and instructions because he probably doesn't know what the hell he's doing." And here's these stickers, and I'll apply them uh, to the figures tonight or something like that like my mom took care of me seriously like why yeah. why is hasbro like enabling these parents to be shitty parents but exactly. um like yeah. i would like to kind of piggyback off of what you said dalton um with you know like make you know wanting to make toys like how they were in the 80s could you please not um <laughs> well that's backwards progress yeah, 90s 90s there we go mm -hmm. much better uh definitely not the early 2000s <laughs> I would I would ask uh, where are my Autobot Target Masters for Titans Returns? Yeah, I got yeah, the, I got some, I got some bullet points. Shells. I got some hot, the, hot where's button where's bullet uh -oh. points. Hot All button right. bullet oh, are we points. done? Because Rick's about to come with some hot. Eggs. I got I got an index card for this for this. <laughs> um, here's where's, here's where's the here's some I issues. Say, where's the Autobot Double Trigger Masters? So I'll, I'll get through the the first. The first one's an easy one, and that that one Dakota will like because I'm talking about uh, some of the more comic inspired stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we don't get that. We have to go to uh, a Mastermind Creations to get that, and I'm that's fine because they do great product. But you know, you are official, and the comic book's official. So where are they? And now that that's out of the way, I want to talk about like new characters, right? What about doing the old gimmicks that we like like a headmaster a brain master whatever it is pretenders but give us new characters 
give us brand new characters. And I know, you know, the design team, they're all creative. They probably would love to do this. They would like to sink their teeth into this. So it's not another Optimus Prime every wave. New characters, but the gimmicks that we all dig, the stuff that we ask for, we love it. It seems simple, but no one, no one's asking those questions. And, and I, I watch, the only one that I kept was Off Road. I thought he was the coolest looking one. Yeah, he was cool. So I didn't, I didn't hear anybody at Toy Fair ask that question, but it seems like a really obvious one at this point. You're not wrong. Like you're not wrong at all. I mean, they're just like Hollywood, to where every time I, I see like on these things that report like movies and TV shows and stuff, I, I hardly ever see like here's this fresh new idea or whatever. Uh, you know, it's always like we're gonna reboot this now, we're gonna reboot this, and we're gonna bring this back. And I'm just like, can you not come up with any new ideas? That's all, that's one reason why I, I'm gonna go see that Ready Player One. One because it just it seems like a nostalgia trip. You know, I think it. Uh, I don't care if it's a crappy movie. I just think that'll be fun, you know. And yeah. it, it, and Spielberg's trying something different, you know, a little different, or at least that's the way it appears. It's something like I've never seen before, you know. It's not someone that's saying, "Oh, I'm gonna reboot Karate Kid again." It's like, well, I've already seen this movie three times. <laughs> Get out of it! I didn't need the fourth one. So, uh. Yeah, but like everything is just reboots. But anyways, uh, yeah, uh, new characters would be be cool instead of just coming out with their or, newest versions. Go ahead. Or or even come with new versions of characters we haven't seen in years, like train bots. I mean, What's I, I, I love train girl. I, I don't even think. I, 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 I totally agree. And Dalton, this is what they would say to you. Beep, boop, beep, boop, bop. Trains are only good in Japan. U.S. people don't want train bots. Beep, boop, bop, boop, bop. That's bull. I want train bots. Hasbro, they come out with Raiden. He's nothing but like Amtrak. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Amtrak and New York subways. That's, that's all he's made up of. Yeah, they, the Raiden would be really cool. Or or Seacons. I mean, I know, I know you'd probably get a, a repaint of those as God Neptune Dakota. You know, we say we would, but I don't think they would. And that's that's I, an, like that that kind of like that kind of leads me into what I would ask them. Like, I get it. You know, I want to ask them about like why the shitty toys Hasbro, and you know what's wrong with your quality Hasbro. But my my question to Hasbro is why? Like, what do you have against the fans? Like, you know, for, like for Transformers, like specifically for Transformers, like what what's your issue with the fans? Because, you know, you, you took away our dedicated convention. This goes to, to, you know, for like Joe Con too. You know, you took away our dedicated conventions. You know, you, you took away our club. You said you were going to, you know, give us a club and you didn't. Like, you know, these these things were they were thriving pretty well on their own. You know, and they they like they all they did was collect a paycheck. That's all Hasbro did. They collected a paycheck. They showed up. They showed off their new products. It was it was their own thing, and like, you know, I get they wanted to try to do that with their you know, their uh, Hascon or whatever, but like, you know, to what end? You know what I mean? Like, why would you why would you like shit in one hand and try to wash the other? That like that to me doesn't make any sense. Like so, and, and I feel I, like I, I've been saying it for a while. Like I feel like that's a blatant like attack, essentially, just on the fans. You know, I feel like they're trying to push the adult fans out. Like, you know, you you look at how low the quality has gotten in the line that they have told us has been geared for us, and that's generations. Um, you know, we 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 see obviously they they you know they stopped promoting. Um, you know, BotCon and the club and stuff like that. Like that used to be on the bottom of every package. And then, you know, they kind of pulled out those last couple of years. And, you know, they, they never pushed anything forward for the adult fans, for the people that are arguably spending the real money. Like, you know, what, what parent that didn't have fond memories of Transformers 
you know, is getting transformers for their kid. Like I know if like whenever kids that grew up with like Energon and shit like that start having kids, they're probably gonna be like, well, these toys were bad. So, you know, <laughs> let's uh let's get my kid some other junk that I enjoyed. Um, so like that that would be that would be my question. Like, you know, what's what's the big effing deal? Yeah, and I don't. I don't want. I, I hope to work on your script a little bit, but I, I would make sure we get your point across. Too. <laughs> if they're, you know, if they are, if they are listening to kind of some of the things that we're saying too, I don't want it to seem like I, I am not happy with a lot of the product I've gotten. I love Trypticon, that Ripper Snapper I just got. I love it. Hunger, love it. There's a lot of stuff that I. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't be. That wouldn't be one of my main hobbies if I didn't love it. I'm just asking that they push it a little bit further and listen to us a little more often on some of the, the detailed things that we talked about and some of the new ideas and, you know, the whole has lab thing. I think that could be a good thing. And, but I no, no, like, I love the, idea. I, want, I want to, I, I like, I really want to interject with you guys here. Um, like I don't love the shit. Like I'm not buying it. I used no, we, to, I used got, to, I think they got that loud and clear. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, but that's the thing. Like I used to, I used to be like, you know, like Hasbro, like I like I don't want to necessarily say a Hasbro apologist, but like I used to understand, like okay, they are definitely doing the best they can, and like you know I appreciate all the stuff that's coming out, all the stuff that I'm getting, and you know it, it was awesome stuff, dude. It was stuff that, like I could get behind, even even with its you know problems. It, you know it was stuff that like I was just like you know yes, this is great. You know this is absolutely worth the. $25 price tag or $20, $15, whatever price tag um, they're putting on it. Uh, and, and like, I just can't say that anymore, man. Like, it, cause it's not like, it's just, uh, they, they're doing bad. They should feel bad. And what, whatever successes they do have that really nail it out of the park are very far and few between. I, I think I mean, they're just doing a lot. I, I think that you guys are on a totally different page than Rick and I, but it might be because, they're doing a lot of stuff that is kind of a love letter to G1 fans. And so, you know, I'm told me and Rick and I are totally digging it, but yeah, you guys seem to not like it, you know, which I, again, that's, that's fine. Just like they, they throw in that, that, uh, Harambe gorilla figure, you know, like I'm not buying that, well, but that was a, that was a fan vote, Josh. Like that wasn't, that wasn't just them. Like <laughs> that wasn't just them saying, Oh, Hey, here's, you know, here's uh you know a primal just because like that's like the fans voted that thing in you know like it or not uh he won so like like you know do it justice like you know you had a whole bunch of fans come out and and you know make this happen only to essentially like shit in our plates like that's my dinner plate and you just took a big fat nasty curly dump in it <laughs> stop it stop taking the shit where i eat you know what i mean like like, I just, I'm not like, like I said, man, like I used to, I used to dig, like, you know, I, I was, man, I, I loved my Hasbro product. I bought my Hasbro product. Uh, and, and, and then like, I just feel like, like they don't give a shit about the fans. Cause like, could you imagine that love letter they could be writing to you? Had they given the same care and thought, you know, that they did back in 2013? Well, I didn't really uh, – I think it's Titans Returns where I'm like, okay, I'm digging this stuff. Because, like, the Headmasters, yeah. uh, those are awesome. The Target Masters are awesome. The Legends that they've done, uh, I think, like, all, I'm going through them. I'm like the Power Glide, the Cosmos, the Swerve, yeah, the Sea Spray. Like, I, I, Braun, I love all those. The clones that they finally gave us, I love those. Uh, what they're doing with that battle trap, I hope we get a flywheels as well. The Dukons, I love those. You know, uh, was I a big fan of the Combiner Wars? Not ever really. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, at first I'm like, okay, so we'll get a bunch of different molds and you know, we'll see how this thing turns out. And then when I saw saw what it was, I was like, okay, no, I'm I'm out on this. Uh, but I love the Headmaster gimmick, and so far, Power of the Primes. There's a lot of stuff like Moon Racer. I'm like, no. I don't like that. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot of people that do. I know one person that absolutely loves it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they're like with the Terracons. Uh, man, I think those things are beautiful. Uh, you know, like I I love the Predaking. I know you don't, uh, but just like um, 
you know, the, the Trypticon that they came out with, uh, you know, I, I, I love that thing, the Fort Max. So, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things these past two years to yeah. say that they're just kind of just taking a big fat dump in my plate. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to piggyback off that too. I don't think, you know, looking at the state of things, especially this last week or two of what we've been talking about with Toys R Us and just the state of toys and, you know, store stuff, that Trypticon, that Fort Max, dude, you need to hang on to that and look at it and say thank you because that, that era, this era where we're used to getting like that Trypticon is amazing. The molding and the detail on that toy, the fact that you could go to the store and buy it or just have it at all, the fact that it exists in two or three years, I don't think it's going <laughs> to exist. I don't think it's going to be something that you even have a chance to get unless it's a HasLab thing or something like that. Those days are going away. Well, yeah. I mean, they've already talked about like, you know, if they were to do a Predaking or not a Predaking, a, 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 a new Unicron it would be a HasLab thing and it would be like $300. Yeah. And like, I'm just, I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, $300. Um, and then I look at the quality of stuff they're putting out now. Like, no, you know, if it was $300 and the quality of stuff they, they used to put, but like, you know, they're seeing where people are just settling for their shit. And like, that's cool. You know, if, if you want to settle for it, that's great. But like, I'm not that dude. You know, like I'm, I'm not, not just selling for it. anything though. Like, there's something I don't like. I don't. I don't <laughs> buy it. You know, like that Starscream Alita one. Like, I'd like to have an Alita one. I wish she was just a, a deluxe, so she right. could fit in with my other little fembots I got here. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like the design of it, so I'm just not gonna buy it. I, yeah, I'm gonna pass on that one. I didn't like the Rodimus. Uh, I know that you guys said that you like the Rodimus or the Shattered Glass one. You know, so yeah. you guys bought that leader. I didn't like it, you know, from the very beginning. And I was just like, look, I'm just for the pass on that sucker. The Optimus Prime one, I'll get that one, you know, which I did. So, uh, you know, so I, I don't think that any company is ever going to come out with a full line of stuff. And, you, and you're like, oh, every single thing is yeah. great. And it, it's all for me, you know. Right. Yeah, they, they already did that. <laughs> it was in 2013. Um. So, 2013. I I didn't buy. I didn't look at the entire line and be like, I gotta have every single one of these things. No. Oh, dude, I did. Generations line in 2013. Rick, certainly you can back me up on that. Oh, I have every single one. But I, I Hasbro stuff, you know, the main, the generation stuff, Power of the Primes, Combiner Wars, Titans. I don't have a complete collection, but it's really close. It's like 90. Eight percent, probably. See, like they also come out with those little legend figures where they were like the the cassettes, like rewind or even the ravage and stuff. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I don't like those. Like, yeah, no, they those, suck. Those are we a can pass. we can say that they suck. They they yeah. they suck. There are little pretender things that are you know five bucks a pop. Love them, you know. Um, yeah, me too. I think those are cool for you know us old guys that you know hey, had my, kids back then, or even my like kid, little kids. My kid had it before this show. My kid was playing with the three that I got him at Christmas. He loves them. He likes them in all the different modes. Yeah, I like them. They I told said before on here they could make twenty new characters in those kind of that size class with the little guys for head or heads or whatever power up stuff i'm good i like stuff like that and yeah they're, affor they're affordable to buy for your kid too which i like i appreciate that sometimes yeah. as well you know the, the other thing is just kind of same thing as marvel legends i don't uh i don't think the i don't think i ever looked at like and you know an entire wave and been like I love every single figure in that way. Like there's always going to be at least one or two where I'm like, uh, eh, you know, if it wasn't for the build a figure piece, I wouldn't buy that. So you know, the, even when the, the juggernaut, out, the juggernaut wave is the closest thing to them yeah. coming up with a perfect wave that I can even remember, like in the history of Marvel legends, that was a good wave. Yeah. You know, I, I love that one. So, I mean, it's the same thing for, you know, on the, uh, Deadpool one, I'm only going to get like two. May I, I've been looking at the Deadpool. It looks like there's enough difference where it was like, maybe I'll get this one too. Uh, but three figures. The Spider-Man one, I mean, I have to have that lizard, but there's really only like three figures that I absolutely want. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the rest of it is just 
you know, I, I where there's more figures that I do not want that I do want on both of those lines, but still, uh, I'm not going to say that the the whole line is just a disappointment. You know, I think I think it should be it should be safe for me to point out here though that uh, like I'm not like like Marvel Legend stuff like shouldn't be a part of this conversation because um, I'm because just using an a, example, right? You know, I I, I get it, but like. It, you know, as far because the reason I say it shouldn't be is because like that's not a Hasbro property, and yeah, like strictly talking about Transformers, which is something that Hasbro does have, you know, their control over. I'm the point I was making is you're never going to look at a full line of something and be like every single one of those is like they knocked it out of the park. On every single figure. Ah, oh, man, I just I feel I feel like I, I don't know, man. Like I mean, we're we're definitely going to disagree very hard here. Um, fact of the matter is, like, you know, uh, they I mean, just it definitely for me, like they don't they don't give a shit about the you know about the people that were actually spending money, you know, supporting. So you're them. talking uh, if you're talking about conventions, then I agree with you. Well, I mean, not just I mean, you know, the convention, the club, like, but that was that was the stuff on the official front that was geared towards us. And there was, there's no replacement for it. They tried with Hascon, and you know what a big success that was, big booming, fantastic success they had there. Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, let's see. I wanted to uh, hit on a couple other things. Uh, make make uh, let's see. Oh, I was gonna say for Has Has Labs, uh, you know how the Black Series, uh, Six Inch Black Series, like they've been doing like the uh, Ray Speeder and the Luke Speeder, or they would do the uh, like they're gonna be doing the Sand Trooper with the uh, is it Dubak? Yeah, Dubak. Little thing, like I, I I appreciate them trying to give us these like kind of smaller vehicles things, but. Uh, they they're not selling well. Every store I go into, like they were on you know clearance, you know pretty pretty early on, and I can't imagine that stores are going to keep on wanting to carry this stuff. So even again, going with the Star Wars, you want to do the smaller vehicles, then put them on the Haslab and just make them made to order. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and that way if we get more options, because uh, I can I can't imagine that. Especially, you don't have Toys R Us now that you just got your Walmart and Target and maybe a couple other places that they're going to want to keep on buying these large quantities from you uh, just to sell a couple at regular retail and then have to clearance the rest of them 50% off, you know, within like two weeks. Uh, McFarlane, uh, Dakota, do you buy any of the uh, Destiny figures or? I uh, bought one. The Destiny, like their Destiny figures, like I, I will say, uh, are a step up from their Halo figures. But to kind of like add to that, like we still need more point of joint. We still, you know, there's still so much stuff we need uh, McFarland to get better at, you know, like or not necessarily get better at, but go back to being good with. So I mean, well, the twelve, at least the twelve month turn turnaround uh, that I've seen with them, it's it's like night and day. Um, uh, I, I would, I would ask McFarlane, you know, like, uh, because NECA, they used to do the borderland figures. Now McFarlane, now they have the license. They're doing the borderland figures. NECA used to do the Bioshock figures. That's another one to where if you try to track down any old NECA Bioshock figure, you're not paying less than a hundred dollars, you know, a figure. Uh, I would, you know, ask them like, Hey, are there any other video game figures that you plan on doing, you know, whether it be Bioshock or even ask NECA, uh, you know, you've got the Kratos and the Crash Bandicoot. So you're obviously kind of working with PlayStation exclusive, you know, uh, brands here. Uh, what about Alloy uh, from actually, Josh, uh, I hate to cut you off, but uh, there is something that I would ask McFarlane about. Um, It'd be the Assassin's Creed stuff, man. They were putting out some really good Assassin's Creed figures for a while. It still kind of suffered from, oh, this figure can't move its joints um, in the places I need it to. 
but like they were still good figures and i was hoping that you know i'd see some with the most recent game that came out but who's doing the assassin creed figures right now it should be mcfarlane they're they're the last persons that yeah yeah he was the last dude that was putting them out now i don't know if maybe mattel would have gotten that like they did halo i don't i mean i wouldn't see why they would but no, I've I've seen them at Walgreens, but I, I didn't. Okay, yeah, those them. those are all the McFarland stuff, and they're okay. they're pretty old at this point. Uh, like I was gonna say with NECA, because they doing a couple of PlayStation things, I would ask them about Aloy, uh, Aloy from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, because that's a PlayStation exclusive game as well, and it's popular. It was like Game of the Year or something. So. Uh. That's pretty much all I had for those and brands. The y'all, I mean, we talked about the Transformer one for a while. Uh, do y'all want to go ahead and just jump in and talk about Toys R Us for a little bit? That's fine. And say your goodbyes. <laughs> Get the somebody uh, cue the Sarah McLaughlin like adopt <laughs> puppy song. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so, I mean, where to start? I mean, we talked, uh, I think, just last Galactic Gumbo, so what was it, like, five or six weeks ago, about these are some ideas that we think that they should implement if they want to stay afloat. And uh, I think it was just, it was too late. I think they knew it was too late, like, months ago. They knew it was too late when they cut bonus checks for all of their top executives. Yep. Well, here, let me tell you this right now. I talked to the store manager at my store today. Which she said they were told on Wednesday that they were closing down, <clears throat> which, of course, she said we've been hearing about on social media, and their bosses were telling them, well, you can't believe what you hear on social media. It's not true. Don't believe it, which oh it was true. But yeah. they these are the same people that told these managers and district managers – that's not true either. We didn't give out these multi-billion dollar bonuses to the higher-ups. <clears throat> and I told her, are you seriously believing that? I mean, that's the load of crap. This is why they're going bankrupt. And the bankruptcy court was dumb enough to let them do it to begin with. Yep. They, they let the, they let them, they let the executives keep their, you know, and like that, that, like that just, you know, not to, not to get on my little high horse or anything like that, not to get on my, my high Shetland, but, um, <laughs> That's like, dude, that's the that's the problem with fucking America nowadays. <laughs> like, you know, like, that's like that's that. But like that stuff, like that's not OK. That's nothing is right about that. You know, that there's there's nothing that's even remotely close to being OK with that. You know, they. um they, They're letting the, the the corporate executives make make out with millions of dollars, a nice little cushion. But like. You know the cogs in the machine, as they say, aren't getting dick. Like, come and on, man. They're not. No, we're getting severance packages. They're not getting nothing. They're just going to get let go. And it's like the manager I talked to, she's been there for a couple of years. She's like, she's got seven applications out. And I was, I was like, so I'm assuming once you get a job, you're gone. She said, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're they're cool. fool, they are foolish as hell if they think anybody is going to stick around and be loyal to the last day. Like no, dude, you just treated all these people like garbage, and you know, and lied to them about it. Yep. Like, no, man, that's ridiculous. But they were lying for a very long time. These guys. I hear a lot of it. There's a company. Um, I don't want. I don't want to put the dude on blast because he's a buddy. But he had he had uploaded a video. The company that like owns Toys R Us, not or maybe not necessarily owns, uh, but like maybe handles their distribution or something like that company called kkr and um they're like they're pretty notorious for making sure um businesses like over order and essentially like go under basically um not not to put my like not to put my alex jones tinfoil hat on but um (laughs) no that's a real thing dakota you're not that that's a real situation that's a real thing yeah Yeah, there's a lot of companies that uh are even people that will uh come in to liquidate uh and then they'll make the execs you know a few extra million dollars you know on their way out the door 
and then the person that comes in to do uh, you know takes control of the liquidation they'll make millions as well uh but all the people that are below them uh they're kind of left you know the Hi, company Tom. yeah the the company is you know canceled and then there's all these people out there that now have to go find a job you know so right and, and that's what they do like as soon as they're you know like they're done with like one company then they go find another company that's struggling and they talk with their execs and then they do the exact same to them and then these execs they'll go and just find new jobs you know because uh at other places like you'll why not, one yeah, will go to jc pennies one will go to you know walmart or whatever why not make your executives you know well you know millions of dollars and you know like i it's 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 a very very shitty way to to just like treat people in general you know what i mean like it, it's it's not right but like that's that's the problem like i don't feel like the problem was ever you know oh well you know toys r us your prices suck i mean like that is true but there's there's there like there's a reason for that mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I gotta give props to us. Uh, a couple of the people that are, were at my, my Toys R Us, uh, one's a assistant manager. Uh, I talked to him, get yeah, what, I think it was in there Friday. Uh, and you'd never think, uh, one, I didn't ask about it cause I went in there, I think Tuesday as well. And then I went in Friday again and I, you know, I didn't ask or say anything about it because, I mean, I am talking about their job, you know, so I, 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 w I would feel bad talking about that because, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm losing a toy store. They're losing their, you know, their employment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I just kind of, I was like, I'm just not going to even bring it up, you know, but you would have never thought, you know, the way that, you know, they were nice and treated me and everything that uh, that, that was actually happening. So. Well, I know, like, I mean, there. I don't know if this is a cushion, you know. I mean, because, like, as a company, Toys R Us has had to pay into unemployment. So, like, these people will get unemployment benefits, you know, in the meantime, which is good. Yeah. Like that, you know, they they should, you know. But it's just it sucks that it even had to come to that in the first place, and it shouldn't have. Um, I don't know if this is actually Quinn, but literally just messaged me and said that. Uh, Toys R Us starts liquidation discounts this Thursday morning. That's uh, nationwide. Mike comes in here. He's like, "Hey, let's go out and celebrate people losing their job." But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh no, once, the, once, once the you discounts, once the discounts happen, the vultures are going to descend on the what's left of the corpse. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. But yeah, they'll. Well, do, is there a certain time period that they strategy. have to be closed? Uh, because like some, I've seen some businesses draw out like going out of business sales for like a year and a half. <laughs> now, that, from my understanding, like it's ten percent, and then it's fifteen percent, and then like it's ten percent for like a month and a half, and then you know, then they change it to fifteen percent. Uh, yeah, Hastings know. drew that out for a while, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. I, it yeah. says here they will be getting. It what says here they'll be getting truckloads every night till nothing is in the warehouse. Wow. Okay, so yeah. it could be a while it because the way I understand it, know. the way I understand it, the KKR or whatever, like they overstock the shit out of everything. So, I mean, maybe they'll find some hidden gems somewhere. You never know. I was, I don't know how long they've had Toys R Us. Um, I'm trying to get my Marvel Legend waves there by the 24th while they're buy one, get one 40% off. Well, I mean, so sooner or later, they'll be buy them all for 90% off. So. I always wanted to ask the manager, can I feel a buggy up and get 90% off right now? <laughs> Mike. Let, let me know how that works. Don't do that, Mike. <laughs> Mike. 
<laughs> hey, if you're if you're fixing to leave, let me let me cash in real quick. Dude, like that's the thing, man. If if I was if I was a manager, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I would be like, make sure uh, on your way to the checkout that you pick up a bottle of that class as well. So, <laughs> it, that, like, I mean, but like that's that's what I'm trying to say. Like, if I was a manager, like I wouldn't give a shit. I would just be like, sure. You know, what are they going to like at, th- at that point? My deal would be like, what are you, you going to do? Fire me? Exactly. <laughs> well, whatever oh, uh, you put on their resume, it's like, can we contact your last employer? I'm like, they don't nope. exist. Exactly. <laughs> so nobody would be any of the wiser. I'd be like Robin Hood. You know what I mean? Just helping out all us toy, toy fans. Just helping out all these nerds. <laughs> Yeah, but back back to like the hobby part of it, like this is a big deal for our hobby. Like, I, I, almost everybody. Like, I don't only do Twitter. I don't do a lot of the social, but it's a big deal. Uh, you know, trying to figure out like where our exclusives gonna go. We we know that uh, you know they've been doing Wal- Walgreens exclusives, Walmart and Target, but Toys R Us always had a. It seemed like a larger number of exclusives. So now, like, I don't think there will be less exclusives. I think that they're going to somehow probably divvy them up between the other Amazon. companies. I'm, I'm going to say right now, Amazon. Amazon has exclusives too. So that's what, you know, are they just going to divvy them up? Or do you think they'll just say like, oh, they'll, because I don't think they'll do less exclusives because I hope they do. I feel like I feel like when it comes to exclusives, a, a lot of that has to do with like certain stores ask for, um, for for exclusive product in some cases, and then I want to say like you know in some cases Hasbro will be like, hey, look, you know, we want to get this made, but these retailers aren't interested in it. You know, would you ex- you know have this as an exclusive or whatever? So like I like dude honestly I feel like Amazon's just gonna swoop in you know because like and we we've seen it with BBTS as well but I really feel like Amazon's gonna be the one to you know come eagle striking in and uh, you know grabbing them all up maybe not necessarily all of them but all all the good ones and I dude I'm all for that I think uh, yeah I, th- I think that'll that'll be a breath of fresh air especially to people who who do like tracking down some of these store exclusives. I hate it. They're, I mean, I'm still trying to get that. Well, I mean, Walmart not necessarily Kylo Ren throne room. Yeah, not necessarily that thing's supposed to like spikes what they're putting out. I didn't. I didn't hear what you said. I was gonna say not not like not like not people that you know no one likes tracking down store exclusives, but the people that like the stuff that you know that they put out like as an exclusive. Mm. Some exclusives I like. Mike, dude, stop your cats from having sex. <laughs> the cat is. <laughs> She's got her nose underneath the door. She's sitting here meowing at me to tell let her in. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to hump your leg. But, I mean, we're, we're kind of already seeing this whole Amazon getting exclusives things with the blast stuff and the counterpunch. I mean. Mm-hmm. Assuming that's real. Well, there, there's links for them. They, they've got links and descriptions, everything. Fake news. There's no photos yet. Shit. I mean, man, until, until somebody slides into my DMs with some, uh, some product photos. Horny cat. (laughs) 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 It's weird that the it's weird not having like a you know uh, just a store that has toys. You know, I've seen you know we we I've seen K and K and K and B, and then Toys R Us and the shelf space at some of the other stores, depending on what stores you're frequent or how big your stores are Target and Walmart. Some of the shelf space is really small. Like we are definitely seeing the end sooner than I thought we would as far as toy stores. Thought we had a few more years, but I, I don't think I'm too bummed out about it, man. Like, honestly, I just, it's, I, it's, it's a perspective thing. So like yeah. I said, I said this on Mike's, the Just Another Joe show, too. For me, it's not as big of an impact now. I'm in my 40s. But growing up, it was. And for you know, for my kid and stuff, we, we told him about it the other day. He loves to go. It's one of the things that we do is like a family experience. And it's, you know, it's fun for us to go and do those things. And I remember it as a kid, my mom would take me. So... No, it's like, just one like of those things I, mean, that- I remember I remember it too, Rick. What I, like what I'm basically what I'm trying to say is like 
you know, do Toys R Us died as soon as 90% of all their stores became Babies R Us. You know, and I, and I feel like I feel like I'm just I'm used to that, so I'm kind of numb to the idea of you know, oh, Toys R Us is dying, Toys R Us is dying. Yeah, it's like, not just uh, not for me it's not Toys R Us, it's going into a store, any store that's just toys and being able to peruse it you know, especially now, like with my kid and whether it's the Lego aisle or it's coloring books or whatever it is, action figures for me. But, you know, all those things, it's you, you won't soon you won't be able to do that. It's just you're going to be sitting in front of your computer uh, and even kids and they're going to be ordering their things off their little five year old iPhones that they have. Yeah. And it's 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 the fam the family dynamic and just, you know, we already talked about corporate America it's just it's not good there's not a whole lot of positivity happening so yeah i mean you're, you're you're not wrong but i was gonna say at the same time like you know what is the family dynamic anymore like you've got so many you know kids and adults or not, not kids and adults but like kids that come from uh what i guess would be quote unquote broken homes yeah. you know what i mean so like that's that's not like have a, having a place where they can go, though, that their imagination can grow and you can experience those things in person. I mean, we're going to be left with uh, Walmart and Target and conventions if you take your kids to, like, conventions. Otherwise, it's just computer screens. It's, yeah. swipe, it's swiping on their phone. There is no – there's no physical experience anymore. Oh, I know. Like, and I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to say, like, that, that I, I disagree with you because, I mean, I definitely agree with you. Uh, the shit sucks, but like, I guess my point was, you know, it's to, to me, like, like that, that's, that shit that's been dead for a while. You know what I mean? Like, so that, that was kind of just where I was going with it. All right. Well, uh, gone a little bit, just, just to, at, at about an hour and a half. So we'll stop when uh, I say we stop. Well, what else do you have to say? Okay, let's stop. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, a, little, a, little, a little tired. Uh, let's see, been up for 28 hours now. So, ha, old man's tired. Ha. Stop it on a sad note. No, Leah, let's <laughs> not stop on a sad note. Uh, something exciting. Oh, uh, Mike and I, uh, we're going to be the April 8th weekend. Um, I have to check and see if that's one of Cybercast Falls or not. I don't think it is. But anyways, we're going to be going to Fan Expo Dallas, and uh, there's the, you know, Val Kilmer's going to be there. So I'm hopefully he talks a lot about Willow. Uh and so uh, I'm going to cover that panel. Uh, you're going to have a Back to the Future panel with Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, and Biff, and the mother or whatever. Uh, there's a bunch of other people. There's uh, the chick from the 100, and uh, just a, a, a lot of a lot of people going to be there. So uh, I'm going to be covering all those panels. Uh, I don't I haven't decided if I'm going to record it and then upload it in video form or live stream it for you guys. So you guys gonna go to that Hooters with the dumb Texas tape shape to shape table? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mike, you like? Well, yeah, we, we, that, I think that's where we ate last time. It is. I got drunk. Thought that was. I thought that Josh. I thought that was our special thing. No, we went to the one in Dallas. We went to the one in Dallas because it was uh, the. Wherever the uh, little shuttle would take us with anywhere within like five miles. Um, you didn't want to go, remember, Carter? Well, no, I couldn't go. Twice in the war. Sorry, I, you know, I have that stupid thing called work. I wish I could get more weekends off, but let's not make it sad. That's a that's not <laughs> that's not a cybercast weekend. It's my weekend. Oh, okay. Are, are All right, Mike. I'll uh, I'll host show? I'll host GI Joe show if you want me to. You want to? Okay, for real. Because you, Fred, of you, comic, Fred, you, comic Fred, books. And, uh, yeah, you, Fred, and uh, uh, Rick take over that. Yeah, go ahead. Rick, that would that could it. be a comic book episode, dude. Yes, it could. 
All right. Fred will know what to do with himself. <laughs> Dude, poor Fred. <laughs> I, think, I think Fred reads the comics, doesn't he? Yeah, he'd be good. Uh, I believe he does, yeah. <laughs> Opportunist. Yeah, and then Dakota, he's on there. He goes, so first off, you know, hosting the show, uh, <laughs> Cobra should make all the bats gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> So. While I'm here, I got a few things to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and end it there. Uh, no reason to you know drag it out, but uh, where can people find you? Uh, fire it off. Promise Sabbath. All right, next. Feltonian Steps. And you can find this classy guy at Just Nerd GI Joe's show. Right. And I'm on Twitter as Shattered Glass Jazz. All right. And you can find me, G1Hextron, on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook pages, the G1Hextron. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.